Hi guys, welcome to the YouTube. I am just doing like a little pre-workout meal. I already have my rice prepped here. I have like a cup and a half in here. And why are you over here? No! No! It's not about you! No! So she likes red meat. Sometimes I give her some steak and she always apparently can smell... You don't even eat your lean turkey that you have in there. You always never finish it when I give it to you. Is she buzz? You never finish it. And then you look at here like you expect me to give you a piece. And it's annoying. So. You're so hungry, look at you. You're just the most starving cat. I don't know, do you guys animals, do you guys animals do this shit? She's like a spoiled little brat, that's what she is. I will not raise my kids like you. I won't do it. You are entitled. And you have no boundaries. Did you ask them what do you think? Okay. All right, so today we're doing an upper body workout. It's gonna be my workout from the Train With Us program. And if you guys are new here, it is $5. We offer, honestly, a good variety of programs. And we're also doing a new idea for June. For June 1st, we will be offering a dumbbell only workout, which will be four days a week. And we wanted to kind of do a program like this because a lot of times we actually go down to my apartment to either do my workouts and liquid stones me a lot down there. and Honestly, a dumbbell workout, a dumbbell only workout is actually very doable. So we're just trying to make these programs, I would say, very low maintenance, very doable wherever. And, you know, if you're looking for a full body, like intense challenge, I would say that's going to be Lucas's program. And if you're looking to really grow your legs and still focus on upper body without doing upper body, I would say too much, then you're probably going to want to do mine. And then if you want more convenient style or you have a home gym or, you know, you have a very busy schedule with your job or your kids or, you know, what, what have you, then probably the dumbbell only workout will be efficient enough for you. And this is actually a perspective that I have tried to really come to, I don't know, terms with is, you know, my, my life used to just be a lot of gym and I used to spend a lot of time in the gym. And it's not that I don't spend time in the gym now, it's just... I think as you get older, you start to realize that there are other things that become more of a priority than just focusing on building your body physically. And I can honestly say that because I've actually pushed myself, you know, I pushed myself honestly throughout my 20s where I was always kind of like watching from afar everyone like drink and have fun and all these things. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing either one. It's just I've paid the consequence, I would say, in terms of caring more about my goals rather than caring about having fun in a moment. And there's a price to pay for everything. And, you know, my body has honestly physically paid the, paid the price. And, you know, now it's like, you know, during the day, I mean, I'm sometimes like all over the place doing other stuff. And sometimes the gym can't be prioritized, you know, as my number one anymore. You know, sometimes it's like number three or number four. And that's kind of why we actually film late. That's why we, you know, we work out late. Uh, it's also very peaceful to go to a gym and not have people ask Lucas like, oh, what kind of camera is that? And it's not even like it's a bad thing. It's we, like, I honestly, like he likes, you know, educating people or just talking about like what he does and what we do. And people are just honestly are curious. It's more so just like, sometimes we're like kind of running on no sleep, no energy. And sometimes like the thought of like having to be personable sometimes just kind of gets to be overwhelming. And also, we don't like to get in people's way, you know, like when we do these, you know, workout videos and stuff like that. So the gym we actually go to now, we can actually play our own music on the iPad, which is super cool. So we've been doing that a lot and just kind of like making the workouts fun um, and efficient. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, your life is in your hands and, you know, what you prioritize becomes reality. And, you know, as much as I've been gym and fitness influencer, like that will always be a part of me, but it's not going to just be all of me and I have very high aspirations and very very high goals that in this moment seem very impossible 
but I think over time it'll be really cool to kind of like reflect back on you know these YouTube videos because you know these YouTube videos are kind of like a stable foundation of what I've actually been trying to build um, for the last almost 10 years um, you know through the gym with myself you know my mental health you know who I want to become who I am now these are all things that I've had to really prioritize and work on so that I can actually get to you know another level or another place in my life and uh, I also just want to say and I'll end this here is that my, my effort is never about money. My effort is more about having the intent to actually want to help other people. You know, whether I do that or not, I don't know, but you know, everyone from afar can, can look at people online a type of way and we can all create our own opinions on people. And like some of our own opinions, maybe they're right. I don't know. You know, sometimes we're, we're aware, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're just projecting, I don't know. But understand something that you really never know anybody on the internet. You never really know anybody, so. Just keep that in mind and I just try to just show you myself and you know this is kind of what it is right now and you know it's not more than that so I'm gonna eat this and then uh, I'm gonna go to the gym I have to change my outfits I cannot wear this to the gym so I actually have a shirt for you Lucas so I'm gonna give you that to double XL so Gymshark has released some cool things so make sure that you use code Miranda when you check out you'll save 10% Typically they actually run a lot of sales, so just be mindful on the website. Like if there's ever a sale or a discount, always just get the discount. Be mindful of the sales, you know, you can actually save a lot of money there. So but yeah, that's it for now. Oh, I knew you were right there. I knew it. Okay, gotta go. And she just went like this. And now you expect me to give you a burger? I don't think so. I will give her a little piece. I'm honestly an idiot. All right, come here, little Daisy. Come on. Ah, I'm the worst. Honestly, I'm, I'm an enabler. Okay, here we go. You knew I was going to do the OPC. I feel like they watched them watching, actually. They, you guys knew I was going to do the OPC. All right, we gotta do a little dance. No, no. Okay. What? Say, Mama, please. No, don't, don't claw me. No, no, no. That's you're doing too much. Mama, please. Oh, okay. Oh, it's right here now. You just whacked it on my hand. Please don't take this anymore. Just eat it right here. She'll still sit behind me when I eat, watch. Mess. So this is like 30 grams per scoop. <laughs> I'm gonna do like 45, I think. Uh, no, no, yeah, no. Would that be 45-ish? Yeah. yeah, 45-ish. I can't do math anymore. It's just uh, vegan protein. I try not to like add whey protein into my stuff because my face does get irritated. And also, too, if you guys haven't tried their new Hawaiian C4 sport pre-workout, try it. It's actually not bad for a workout. Like, I would say you could still probably take it in the evening. The beta alanine is not super high, and the caffeine is actually very tolerable. It's not, like, 300 milligrams. I just can't, like, at this hour, I can't, uh, I can't afford to, uh, take caffeine. So, yeah, the sport one which is the one that I had just done in my uh, one of my reels. The beta alanine only has two grams, where like the C4 Ultimate, for example, has, I believe, like 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this, so the Ultimate has like 10.65 grams of beta alanine. So the two grams like makes a huge difference. 
And then this one has 300 milligrams of caffeine. And then the sport one only has 200, which is more reasonable. And it also helps replenish electrolytes. So it's kind of like you're getting like a Gatorade type feel into the pre-workout. So that one's not as bad to take at night, but this one would really like just... Yeah, I'm not doing pre-workout right now. I'm actually gonna be mixing in like creatine and glutamine into the smoothie. No matter what brand I'm with, no matter if I'm not, if I am, me being in the gym and me just caring about my physique, I'm always gonna be taking glutamine and creatine. Creatine monohydrate, typically. This is, it's just never changed for me. This is always gonna be a part of my life, my lifestyle. You know, everyone makes like getting sponsored like a lot more than what it is. And you know, it's kind of like when like people that play professional sports, they change, you know, you're not like commenting on their thing. Like, how dare you leave Gatorade for Propel? Like no one's doing that. Or maybe they do. Do people do that? They do do that. Okay, so people do that. Never mind. I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention. It's okay. All right, I'm an idiot. Just sleep me. All right. I'm not gonna act like I talk about sports. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know shit. Whatever. It's fine. Okay, so I just did some frozen raspberries. I have a banana in there already. I'm gonna do like half cup of oats here. Um, that, as of right now, you guys. Fun fact. I used to be a psychopath about my food. I'm not anymore. I have not tracked my food in two weeks, but I still eat around the same amount just because I'm so familiar with like what exactly I'm putting in my body. So I'm aware of what I'm doing. I just, I'm not doing the most anymore at this moment of time. So if you guys were just curious and wanted to know, that's what it is right now. I'm gonna do a little sprinkle of, this is, um, Super seed, we've got chai seed, flax seed, and hemp seeds all in one. Um, this is eight grams of fiber, six grams of protein, five grams of omega for three tablespoons. I'm not doing three tablespoons because we've got 11 grams of fat and wow. No, we're just gonna do like a little bit. Just This is kind of like my sprinkle of health for the day. Kind of like, you know, but yeah. No idea how much that is. It's probably two tablespoons. So I probably got like seven grams of fat. I don't know if that math is very good. But Okay, now I need ice because it needs to taste good. So. You look like a bunny. Okay. Last but not least, honey. Honey for my honey. Ah, it hurts my hands to do this. Remember those smoothies you used to make in college? I'm sure there's one on there. My apartment. I don't know. I used to make like 2,000 calorie smoothies. Don't ask me. They were so good. I used to follow bodybuilders online and I used to mimic what they would make, like and eat. So I either was bulking at the same time that I was cutting or I was cutting at the same time that I was bulking. Did I just say that? Bulking at the same time I was cutting and cutting. You said at the same way too. Oh. So like I would go from eating like Chicken and cucumbers? Yeah. What? I don't know, it's just like not... Because you're not putting it on straight. Well, because there's little ice cubes there. <laughs> oh, man, nor, nor liquid, huh? No, why don't you start playing? No, it's gonna... Uh, does this heart attack thing well, ever Once it spins, it'll fall, fall off, fall off. It's like, uh, sounds like it's gonna die, watch. Cause it's not, uh, watch. Watch, you ready? Mm -hmm. I told you it was gonna do that. Did I not tell you that? Yeah, I told you, I imitated the whole thing. Did you know it was gonna do that? Um, I kinda did. I did too. This actually looks pretty good. I didn't put any, any gross shit in there. Ah! Ow! Wow. It's okay, you loosened it for me. Oh, we, we got a thick one today. Thick with a K or thick with two C's?
I'm not gonna lie, the protein ruins it. <laughs> what are you doing? This is what she does every day. Sits in my seat, thinks that the food is hers. Either sits there or she'll go on my chair like she's a bird. You're so spoiled, look at you. Oh, so do me a favor, um, give me some salt, please. Let me see what this one is. This one says lifting baddie. Am I a lifting baddie today? I don't know. <laughs> this is for you. It's the back of that one, say. So. Oh, this was like your style. I like that. This says made for movement, built to last. And you want it last forever. Have your legacy be remembered for decades to follow. Are we going to match? Huh? Well, this isn't, it's not the same thing. Well, they're both black. I don't know if I'm going to wear this one. I don't know. This is for you. It's a double XL. Thank you. Is that and then... This is so like, I feel like 90s. Like retro. Yeah. yeah. Like 90s workout video. Um, B B H R B C R. Wait. I can never wear that. Wait. V H R V C R. V H R. Huh? V H R. What's V C R? VC oh wait maybe maybe VCR is the t VCR is the, the where you put your TV in like the TV yeah the, the big block <laughs> yeah VCR VHR what's VHR is that a TV show channel can you guys just tell us what <laughs> Where's it is VHR yeah. I don't know. so this is um, lifting baddie white edition I feel like you would never let me wear white I mean you've worn white you have white tennis shoes and they got dirty like literally that day. My point's proven. Yeah. You're a dark color palette, I'm a light color palette, but I would still get this dirty anyways. It'd be like orange around here, see? <laughs> orange, beige, tan, whatever. Is that your fit today? No. I don't know. I just think, because if I'm going down and we're going to sit on the floor, do like underhead pull downs. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a vibe, you know what I mean? So. I'm digging this, the white though. This lighting really makes your delts look good. Let's see, can I do a lap pose here? I mean, I can't see I feel like such a douchebag. bag. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Yeah, these are, these are new too. And this is, oh shit. That's like my shirt. Yeah. Come on, come on, man. Oh, you gotta do me like that. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. That's Look, a good one. Lifting club. It's like a velvety. <laughs> All right, right now we need to hurry up. All right, so I. I'm going to wear. I always have to wear a sports bra because I don't always show my back. So you know what I mean. Well, this is new. Also, guys, I, you probably are like, yeah, you should probably know what you get in the mail. I do, but I don't. I also have help because I can't always put all this stuff away. It's like overwhelming sometimes. So. does a good job. Just... I'm not even gonna lie, it overwhelms me the amount of clothes I have. I'm not even gonna lie. I give a lot. I actually give a lot away, to be honest with you. I give a lot away just people I know or for like the holidays and stuff. Sometimes I'll just like leave clothes places and just like put them in a bag and stuff. So like if I have to, if I actually kept everything, that whole like the whole bedroom over there would be like I'd have probably clothes stacked to the ceiling. Um <clears throat> 
So like also just understand I'm not out of touch with reality. I actually try to give um, as much as possible to be honest with you. I just don't go on here and like talk about it every time. It's just like sometimes it takes away the kindness of like people like doing in like a kind of like an act of kindness. I feel like when you're just always like camera, 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 film, film, film. It's just kind of like I would do it sometimes, but uh, I, I just don't even, I don't know, I just don't, I don't do it. But anyways, all right, I'm gonna wear this horse bra. And I'm gonna wear this long sleeve, because it looks fun. All right, uh, hi guys. Uh, did not go to the gym uh, as of, as of I, w I guess it would be more so this morning. I was honestly too tired, and I kind of was just like, I don't know, I don't really feel like going, and I'm gonna go in a, in a little bit. So it's like eight. 8-ish right now, so, but Luke and I were just kind of sitting here, I had him uh, stop and get Chipotle because I was really craving it, so shout out to him for doing that, but we were just kind of talking about just life and like the way that people live and, and either they're happy or they're not, but like they're also not like ready to make changes and then it's like a whole thing of like you're just complaining about what's not working but then you're not ready to make changes and uh, also too, just to preface, my face is super red. Uh, just because I, I haven't done like my skincare like literally all day, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like I've just been doing other shit, and I haven't even washed my face yet. So just my face is not like this red one because of stress, I think, and two because it's because my I didn't do like my, my skincare shit yet. So, um, but yeah, just in general, like I've just been in a lot of situations lately. Just I don't know, being 28 years old and like not having a family and not being married and not having like all the stuff that I kind of see everybody else have, and. A lot of people like that I know are actually like not, they're like not happy in their life and they actually try so hard to convince other people, whether that's like their family, whether it's themselves, whether it's their friends, whether it's social media, they try really hard to convince like everybody else that they're super happy and like they're content with their life, but they're actually really mad about a lot of choices that they made either recently or years ago and they wish they could go back in time, but like they also wouldn't go back in time because maybe their choices actually fit into the lifestyle that other people have around them and it's actually easier for them to live that lifestyle than it is to actually like look at yourself in the mirror and make changes that you actually want to make because it, it would require a lot more effort than like what that person is doing like actually like right now in life and i find that a lot of people in life these days i don't know if it's social media i don't know if it's parents enabling their kids to just to be like what they have been i don't know if it's a mixture of all of it i don't know but I noticed that a lot of people are not happy within the ages of 25 to like 32. Either you're single and you're very alone and you're lonely and you're depressed and you probably have mental health issues that you haven't even been aware of because you haven't even dove into mental health because your family probably thinks it's it's like a joke or a fraud and that everybody else is probably like more like effed up than you are so that you kind of feel like you're normal or maybe you're in a relationship with somebody but maybe you didn't see like the, your future with that person so then therefore you're just kind of like living a lie and trying to just kind of make it work and like you're just lying to yourself or you actually have a relationship that you have worked really hard on and you are happy and, and maybe you're on your way to having kids and there's nothing wrong with that and then there's also the people that work really hard at a career and do feel very alone and lonely, but then there are certain sacrifices that have to be made in order to get somewhere else. And then everyone else, everyone else around you is like, are you dating? Or did you find a person yet? Like, you're this and you're that, and like, come on, go on a dating website. And it's just kind of like, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't do everything. And that's also kind of my point too, is like, if you're focused on like having a career, you can't always prioritize having the best relationship and also you can't prioritize like meeting people in the best scenario as well you know there's a lot of sacrifices to all the things that i just said like if you're focused on having a good relationship with your wife and you guys are going to have kids you're probably not a hundred and fifty thousand percent you know career oriented right now and you're probably more focused on trying to build a family and trying to actually like build integrity and a foundation so that you know you guys can actually have a healthy growing up system compared to like maybe how that person grew up you know in, in their childhood life it's just, it's just always interesting looking at my life or just hearing other people, honestly, or not even hearing other people. I actually can very much so feel how people think and how they actually live their life. And I'm not saying that I'm psychic, but I kind of am saying that I'm psychic. But like, I, I can actually hear when people talk if they're lying to me or not. It's actually this weird thing where 
I don't even have to say a word, but like I can actually feel that like their soul is lying to themselves first and then me. And I can't say like, hey, like I can't accuse that person of like buying, but it's like this weird like sense that I get where I'm like, you know, if I ask a question like, oh, you know, did you do blah? And it's like, the answer is no. It's like, no, no, no. I know you're lying. I just, I feel it. I know you're actually lying. Or are you happy? Yeah, yeah, no, you're not. I can tell. I can tell you're not happy. So yeah, anyways. If you want to say anything, no? No, you did a great job. No. And also, like, even like with, with Lucas and myself, you know, sometimes we get wrapped up in our own like mental health stuff where like he has ADHD and I have ADD. And so sometimes, you know, like my lack of awareness sometimes on, on a schedule or time or, you know, losing track of time in a day affects his ADHD, which sometimes can trigger like maybe me pissing him off, uh, like not intentionally. And then like maybe he actually re reacts to me negatively. And then it's kind of like, we have to always kind of like be like, okay, so what's the problem here? What are we doing? Why is this happening? You know, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people don't even know how to do that. Like a lot of people don't even know how to actually like communicate and solve problems. They actually just run away. Like, dee, 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 dee. Oh, I can't deal with this anymore. And then when you run away from problems, you run away from yourself and then you run away from what you really want in life, which is to be better. But it's not, you don't actually want to be better. You just say that because the words that you say actually don't even hold any value of any kind. And then you just continue to live this, this life that you actually never wanted. And it's because of your own choices. A lot of people in life actually live a life that they never wanted in the first place. Isn't that crazy? A lot of people, like they live a life and they make choices that they actually hate and they're not even honest with themselves or the people that they actually spend a lot of time with. That's crazy to me. Well, I think it's more so, let me get in the camera. It's less about like they make decisions, like they do make the decisions, but I think it's because a lot of the decisions people have to make, whatever their situation is, they're hard. They're hard situations that put you in an uncomfortable position of something that you're not used to doing, yeah. of something that you maybe don't understand. And then because of that, you don't like hard, you don't like uncomfortable, so you stray from it. Yeah. And then everything that you wanted from your life... It's not what you have. It's not what you have because to get to greater things, you have to grow, and to grow, you have to be uncomfortable. And you have to embrace uncomfortableness and work through it. And also, I'm just gonna say this right now, the biggest, well, okay, not the biggest, but like one of the biggest downfalls that I see being in the age group of like 25 to 32 is the parenting. The parenting style of women and maybe the lack of parenting from the father. Either the father is not there, either the father is there. I mean, I've seen all, all different scenarios. Like I knew somebody in college that had a great family and had no respect for herself at all. <laughs> like I'm talking, <laughs> what? That is the real life of you were talking about. Um, so it's kind of just like that was confusing to me. Um, where like maybe the father is actually like overly obsessive with like the daughter and you know. He's just too enabling. In that situation. He was just he let he he let his princess get away with too much. Oh, the princess term. I actually just made, like my skin. I mm -hmm. did that. You know? Made your skin. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. So like, I have different daddy issues where like I just didn't have one and then like my stepdad came in the picture but like to be honest with you when my parents were getting divorced I'm like how many how many Larry's are we going to have Like how many of these Larry guys are we how many of those are going to be walking through that door Just one Just one I ended up just being one <laughs> But like Larry came to stay Yeah well they did have a little bit of a he rocky came, beginning but like he came to stay We'll just leave it yeah. at that. <laughs> yeah. Took a few TVs, put them back eventually, but... <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, back to what I was saying. I think a lot of the problems that we have in terms of building relationships and maybe not being able to actually like positively contribute to a relationship, somebody else, foundation, whatever, or even like being like a, a father or a husband or what have you, I think the biggest problem is, is the parenting style and the lack of awareness that parents have in the society. Like I find baby boomers to be the absolute worst. I find them to be so in their like canned corn, black bean era where like they're not, you know, thinking like, oh, like maybe I should have like the actual healthy version of that. And 
maybe I should spend four more dollars at the store and get like the actual plant rather than getting it in a can. We have the cans and then we have plants. Okay, you need to explain this analogy. <laughs> Where you oh, I'm, I'm a plant. I want to grow. Oh. The can just stays on the shelf and it just stays the, same. stays the same. And the expiration date is like four years in a can on the same shelf. That was deep. I made it deep. I make everything deep. That was pretty sad. That was deep. I know, but I'm trying to be the plant. Like I want to grow and like I want to get watered and like I want to get like watering. Like if you water me, that's like you're giving me some like sort of like accomplishment words or like validation shit, you know? You don't like words of affirmation. No, but like it's nice to hear sometimes. I told you this earlier too, remember? I'm like, how come blah, blah, blah. Okay. So. Yeah. Like just be like, like even like, like, like my message. If you're not, if you have nothing nice to say, just like my message. I'll be like, all right. Like you like me. But if you don't respond to it, I'm never sending a long message again. Just forget it. Like I'm done with this. <laughs> but uh, anyways, back to my, my analogy here. I really just pulled that out of my ass. Also. That's pretty sad. Yeah. Because you're like, where are you going with this? I had no idea where you were going with this. <gasps> like I'm trying to get watered and to grow into something more. And then these people here, you could tell them the same thing 35,000 mother effing times and they will validate your feelings. They will say things like, I understand what you're saying. No, the F you don't. No, you don't. If you understand, you will change. Oh wait, but you don't because you don't comprehend what is being told to you. No, they don't want to do the hard thing and admit that they're the issue. But they're not though, right? Because everybody else around them doesn't think that they're the issue. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, they're busy. These people over here, the cans, psh, psh. man, they're busier than the plants. I'll tell you right now. It's kind of they're like busy the doing. It's kind of the can. It sounds like when you open it. Psh. They're kind of like they're busy just sitting on that damn shelf, never growing up, never changing. But then those people will be like, "Did you hear so and so? He's a drug addict now." Oh, right. I forgot. You have a right. I forgot. You, you think that you have a right to judge everybody else on how they live their life? Because you don't even judge yourself enough. Isn't that crazy? All these people on the shelves, they have so much shit to talk and they have so much judgment to communicate because trust me, they, when, they, when they go off about someone, they're gonna, they need to be heard. And they judge the plants for like, why, are, why did that person do that? Or, or he or she, she's this. You don't know shit. You don't know anything. And then you judge people for how they live and you don't even judge yourself for how you live. Literally, you are the problem. Here's your mic, drop it. You are the problem, like literally. You slammed that fucker. Yeah, it hurt my hand a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but like, again, it's just, it, we were just kind of going on this like tangent because it, I find that I get, I'm a very hard person like for people to vent to I'm a very fast thinker and I have all these really great things to say. But then my thought process is, can this person handle what I want to say? Oh, probably not. The answer to that question is probably 99.1% no. So then I gotta be like, all right, how do I, how do I, like, if I'm a 15 out of 10 every day, how do I communicate to this person like Miranda one out of 10? So then like while they're talking, I'm still listening. But I'm more so processing, like when they ask me a question, like, what do you think? I'm like, oh God, I'm, I'm now having to just, oh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to hear my, no, no, I want to hear it. No, you don't. No, no. But lately I don't even get asked, like, do you want, like, can, like, what's your opinion? I think people just know at this point. I'm not really sure, but maybe I'm not the best person to be like, I, I, I see the way you feel. Maybe I'm like, I, I try to make sense of things. Like I have empathy, like really I do. I actually probably care more about people's mental health than my own, but I, I listen to people. She does. I listen to people tell me their problem. And while they're telling me their story, I already have a solution, like a solution that has data that like says, Hey, like, okay, so this is the problem. Let's, let's solve it. But then I realized that most people that communicate and talk about a problem, they're just talking and I wouldn't even say that it's venting. It's not venting. They're just talking. Because to me, if you're venting, then you're, you're wanting to like let something off of your chest and like you have like, you have something like you, you like you're, you're overwhelmed, right? You're stressed out, you're blah, 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 blah. But if you're venting, 
and you're not open to hearing anyone else's feedback, what is the point of venting? Just talk to yourself. Talk to yourself, record yourself on a video camera, blah, 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 record it for 30 minutes or whatever you need to do, vent, and like just be done with it. How, how do you expect people to hear you vent and then just feel like, I'm so sorry. Huh? You wasted 35 minutes of my time and now I don't even get to say my opinion? All right, because now you're going to be offended if I say anything at all. So then Miranda in the scenario is just kind of like, it's pretty hard, man. Sorry. And then it's, do you have anything else to say, Miranda? Too much. I have too much to say all the time. And then if I give my opinion, don't get mad at me. Ah, but you're going to get it. You're going to get mad anyways, because if I say it, ah, it's so rude, even though it's not. And then ah, it's, this is like, this is my issue in life. Some people are alone in life by choice. And some people just can't, <laughs> can't be comprehended uh, to the extent that one would need mentally to actually have people in their life. I'm talking about myself. I'm naturally actually a very social person and I actually naturally am very welcoming, I'm very inviting. Uh, I actually, I've actually had at least five different people come in, in my place in terms of like helping me, whether that's assisting or cleaning and what have you. I have, I have literally worked with people that are drug addicts. I have literally worked with people that have addiction problems. And I'm talking like, and I'm like, I'm being completely honest with you. I accept people of all races, ages, uh, ethnicities, everything. I do not, uh, I'm not. Like, oh, you know, you're not this. Like, I, I trust everybody until they show me that I can't. And what people don't realize about me is, is like for how tired and stressed out and overwhelming I can be and for how much I actually like want the world to be a better place or like I hold myself to that standard of wanting to be better. Energy does not lie to me. And the biggest mistake that anyone could ever make to me is lying to me just one time. You cannot lie to someone that you should be a professional liar. You just can't. Doing that and then also kind of being around, I'd say like drugs and stuff, like when I was like 14, you know, I have already seen a lot of that stuff and a lot of the things that I was actually very heavily involved in are pe like people actually are now more involved in like in their 20s. And so like I already kind of like experimented and did that kind of stuff and I used to lie about it, you know? And sometimes I get away with it, sometimes I wouldn't. But like when you actually lie to someone that used to be a liar and like used to uh, like lie about everything almost every day and hide stuff. Like, I mean, I, I was a really good like hider. What I'm trying to say is, is like, don't mistake someone for being too much of a mess or too much of a chaotic disaster or a tornado. Don't, don't underestimate someone's ability to call you out on your shit. Because if I could say everything that I just said to you right now, which is honestly pure uh, vulnerability and honesty, lie to me one time and that will be your biggest mistake. That's it, I got nothing else to say. All right guys, we're gonna try this another another day here. Trying this round two, taking my pills. This is, I don't know, some bullshit Lucas bought me when I was going through my nose surgery. Asked him what got in gummy form. Like, really, you, you helped me gummy form? I haven't eaten yet, so <laughs> I don't think this helps me at all, but that tastes pretty good. <laughs> so. I'm gonna take my collagen. This is from Transcend. I'm also gonna take my vitamin D here, 10,000 IU. This is where it's at. Typically, with vitamin D, though, you want to make sure that it's, uh, you're taking vitamin K as well. Then we got my dihexa, tesofensine, and DHA. So I take uh, vitamin A as well. I have it here, magnesium. I take that at night, and then I also do if I have allergies. So I have a question. What? What do you consider night? Cause like, we're in the midst of night. <laughs> like is night for you like- I, What did I say? Like I take magnesium at night. Before bed. Okay. Do you have anything to say? No. I love my mom and that's it. How would you describe the relationship I have with my cat? She's a prissy bitch. Really? And you treat her like one. What do you mean? I look for her. 
You treat her like she's a princess. Really? Yeah. You enable her. What do you mean? Why do you think she yells so much? You encourage her to yell in there when you when you felt her feet. Yeah, because I know she likes that stuff. So just because you get enabled, you help other people don't, get enabled? Don't, don't deflect this onto me. <laughs> this isn't about me. Oh. So you can't. Did I offend you? You see, everything offends everybody, but I'm out here not getting offended. The truth offends. So Lucas, how do I how do I get on Miranda's skincare level through Transcend? What do we gotta do? You think? On your level, you please don't please don't make it more than what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> you take collagen support. <laughs> right. How do we do that? Click the link in the description. Yeah. You wanted to say bio, I know you did. I did. I was actually about to say you can't get on your skin to your level. Your I can't even get on my own level, what do you mean? Shit's a wreck. <laughs> you know how you're supposed to push in and then twist? Not just twist? No, I'm pushing down. It's down and then twist, right? Down, in, twist. down, same thing. That was better. I listened to what you said and it was better. So the cool thing about Transcend too is that, you know, you know, yes, can you take supplements that have collagen in them like elsewhere? Yeah. It's more so this is a really great type of collagen to take and it's in pill form. I have taken collagen from other companies and it's not that I have, I would say so much of an opinion on how I'm taking it. I prefer going through a source where it's medical grade it's uh, a level higher than just having, you know, for example, collagen. I've actually used collagen and I put it in my coffee. I've done that for years. I'm totally not against it. I would still do it as of today. It's just more so like, I wanna make sure that I'm getting a pure form of what I'm taking, which is also great because the vitamin D here, you know, like this is in liquid form. So I love that. I used to just take vitamin D in pill form, but they have that as well. And I'm gonna be starting a new, a new, I would say product with them. I don't want to say like substance. Well, I guess it's a substance, but if you guys have ever heard celebrities taking NAD, Transcend actually has NAD. So I'm going to be taking that, trying that out. I will definitely let you guys know what my experience is. It, if I had to guess correctly and like just, you know, predict my future, I would say I'm probably going to love the hell out of it, but we will definitely uh, find out here. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, our health is what we invest in. And regardless of you not buying anything through Transcend, the least that you could do for yourself is actually just get your blood work done. Because what happens after that is they actually have a wellness specialist to get on a phone call with you. And they actually will go over, you know, what this, you know, means over here. Um, you know, if your estrogen is too high, if your testosterone is too high or low, you know, and they will actually give you recommendations. So even if you don't purchase, you know, I would say medications through Transcend, you at least have an idea of like, okay, so this is kind of where I'm at. And if you're not seeing, you know, physical progress in the gym, you at least have a foundation to start from and you can kind of just build from there, you know, with like what makes you actually feel comfortable. So whenever I talk about Transcend, it's not always like a money grab. It's more so just, I've actually really loved working with them. I've seen an improvement in my own health and I like the, the regimen that I'm on. And you know, you guys have, you guys know if you've watched my other previous videos, you know that I've loved my VPC as well. I'm not even gonna lie, it's been hard for me to do the injection part of this process just because my schedule lately has been kind of all over the place and I've actually been struggling like trying to maintain a, a routine with just everything that's going on. So for those that don't know too, I don't think I've actually like announced this anywhere, but we officially have a manager that we're working with and we also are working on getting a contract settled with an agency. So this is actually really great news. We've been trying to figure out and have some help for a long time now and it's kind of been honestly a really great process to have a little bit more guidance and like a different direction rather than Lucas and I just spinning our own wheels and staying up all night for no reason now. Now we stay up all night just for... You guys. <laughs> yeah, see this is my effort of trying to stay in the fitness industry because you know I uh, I get with companies and then a year later you can always guarantee that I'm gone so cheers. Foreshadowing. <laughs>
All right, guys, this is the first movement of the workout. We're gonna do a dual cable pull down. We're doing this instead of the cable high row because we're at a different gym. So we're just trying to focus on targeting the lats still while doing a similar movement. So the big thing here is to notice that as she's pulling down, she's focused on pulling her scapula down and then driving her elbows to her hips. You'll notice she's keeping her elbows tucked. She's focused on squeezing at the bottom. It's a very simple movement. And why I like this one so much is because when you do get to that full extension at the top, it helps keep tension on that lat where you can lose it doing other types of pull downs. I would say too, it's a good range of motion for someone that actually like wants to target lats and your scaps. Cause like I would say, me keeping it neutral with my elbows tucked, I'm allowing myself to really gain, like I would say the momentum when like I'm stretching all the way up. Where like I feel like sometimes when you're doing like a machine, it's very hard to kind of keep the tension then also go heavy. Well, I feel like here when you're sitting on the ground, you have no choice honestly but to control it. So like when I'm extending all the way up, I'm you know kind of doing what he says, like pulling my scaps down, pulling it all the way down and squeezing. So that way I actually get like great scapular retraction and a stretch. And then I also actually activate my lats as I'm coming down and I'm squeezing. And then as I'm also coming back up, I also feel that in my lats as well. It's all about controlling every part of the movement, not just one part of it. Okay. Okay, so the second movement in the superset is a dumbbell line tricep extension. This is probably my favorite tricep movement just because it really targets the tricep very well. So notice as she's coming down, her elbows stay pointing towards the ceiling. And then she's focused on bringing her forearm to her bicep. That full range of motion is gonna get the best stretch throughout the entire tricep. And then as she comes up, she's squeezing the tricep at the top. My favorite tricep movements too. Really? Yeah, to do. Just the stretch is really good at the bottom. It's one of my favorite. I would say if it wasn't this one, I would go with a, the cable crossbody. Yeah, I was actually gonna say single single arm yeah, tricep. Yeah, single arm can, cable are my favorite, and then yeah. that one. Because when you can like really turn the the cable, mm -hmm. you really start to feel like the the so, tension back there, like right where like I would say like fat would jiggle. I feel it back there. I would say like a lot when I do the crossbody ones. We should put that on our next program. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, so in our workouts, you're gonna see that each workout has like two ab movements. In Miranda's program, she has a physio ball crunch and a cable ab crunch. For the physio ball crunch, you're gonna notice the ball placement on her is about mid to upper back. And that as she comes back, she's focused on getting a good stretch in her core. And then she's coming forward and squeezing her core. That stretch all the way when she comes back helps bring I don't want to say tension, but you want to get that. It's like any movement. The more you can get the stretch and squeeze while maintaining tension, the more you're going to work that muscle, the more that muscle is going to grow and build. Okay, guys, we're in the first exercise of the second superset. We're going to do a dumbbell standing shoulder press. There is not a lot to say here because she's only doing three reps. I'm going to tell you what to do though. Her core, her core is, this is her core. Her core is tight. Her glutes are engaged. She's working a full range of motion. Every rep, she takes a deep breath. She pushes that air into her core. She engages her core with a good brace. She keeps that core tight and she presses. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate things. If you start to arch like this, like you got a booty, but you don't got a booty, which is like half the girls in the gym, you're doing it wrong. Lucas. I did five reps also, so you could explain it more. You're welcome. All right guys, so the next movement in the superset is a pull down. This is supposed to be an underhand pull down, but her apartment gym has a lat pull down machine, so we're utilizing it. Big thing to notice, she is working a full range of motion. Tension is constantly kept on her back. She is driving her scaps down and driving her elbows towards her hip. And she's getting a full stretch every rep. Miranda's back is a great representation. Oh my ego? No, it's a great representation of, you can just see on her back very well, like her muscles working. And it's very, it's honestly great. Because most people, they have underdeveloped backs and then they try to tell you to do workouts in the gym, but like they don't look the part. And then they're telling you how to look like them, but they don't look like anything. So don't be like those people. Okay, so we're doing a cable single arm side raise. First thing to notice, the height of the cable is right below her hip. Putting the height of the cable at that height is gonna help keep better tension on your delt as you work that full range of motion. And then you're gonna notice as she comes in with the thing, she, she doesn't want to touch. She keeps tension on the delt, comes all the way in, 
and then raises back up. It's gonna keep better range of motion, better tension. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here, where as she comes to the bottom of the rep, she still has tension on that delt, and then she's able to raise back up and work that muscle better. So this is probably one of my favorite variations of a side raise. If I can't do a dumbbell, I prefer doing this. There you go. All right, so the second movement in the superset is a cable rope curl. Honestly, this is a bicep curl, guys. There's not much to really explain here. Okay, talk about maybe like the resistance between me and the cable hog. Can you imagine? Yeah, so I would say the biggest thing to talk about is kind of what Miranda's talk just kind of mentioned. You can see that she's leaning back and then she's curling the rope from her hips to her shoulders. By doing this, she's just keeping better tension on that bicep. And that's the main thing. It's personally why I like using cables versus dumbbells. When tension is better kept through a full range of motion, you just get a better pump. And Miranda's the same way where it's very much so about the engagement and the mind-muscle connection versus just doing a movement and going through the motions of it. I'd also say too, this cable, uh, just because it's, I just think it's the brand and like how, the way that it's structured, but mostly a lot of cables go all the way down the bottom. So I would probably have better tension if this was a cable that I could like really put all the way down where it's like this one's a little bit raised. This is more like multi, I'd say dimensional. So I still have to kind of like think about, okay, like it's not all the way down. So I need to kind of like almost like put my hips forward a little bit and give myself more resistance so that I can actually like feel the curl as if it was a cable that was like all the way down at the bottom. Last movement of the day, we have a cable overhand row. If I'm being honest, lately, I really prefer using cables over anything else. I like machines, I like hammer strength, I've always liked dumbbells and barbells. Miranda's very the same way. We've always trained where it's more about strength and it's been less about like mind-muscle connection and engagement. And since we've moved to Florida, we've really changed the way that we approach training where it's more about can we keep that tension, keep that engagement, and still lift a good amount of weight? So it's not a, as much about looking like you're lifting a ton of weight, and it's more about lifting a good amount of weight with control and tempo while keeping the best tension on that muscle. Yeah, I would say keeping everything just very seamless. You know, yeah. the same tension while you go up, you know, or say while you resist against the movement is the same resistance that you have coming down from the movement. It's, it should all, actually all be the same. And one thing I, I really appreciate, like when I had a coach, is that it really humbled me in the sense when, you know, I would be sending workout videos and stuff and, you know, he'd always constantly say, like, Randy, you need to slow down. You know, you do really great form, but you need to slow down. And by slowing down, I realized that I, I got, honestly, way more physique progress when I slowed down movements. You know, I, I was just kind of like trying to pick it up and put it down. So when I actually started doing deadlifts, I would say with negatives, saw a lot more, you know, honestly, strength progress and physique progress. When I started slowing down my lat pull downs, for example, or my bicep curls, I started to realize like, oh, I've been feeling bicep curls like a lot here. I'm now feeling it up here and I'm targeting now a whole different part of my bicep, which is also going to improve my physique. So a lot of times, you know, when we're getting into the gym, you're not really thinking about all these like minute details because you're really just focused on getting in a workout. But then as you, you know, grow in your journey, you get to the point where you're like, okay, what am I working out for at this point? What is what is the purpose? Lucas kind of talked about this earlier on in the video, and you have to keep this clip now because I'm referring to it. But you know, there's a difference between working out for health-related purposes, which is there's nothing wrong with that, and then there's also a difference between trying to look a, a, a certain type of way. You know, and at the end of the day, we all get into the gym for our own reasons, whether it's anger, whether it's stress, whether it's you know our doctor is telling us to do so, whether they're not telling us to do so. Whether you you know you want to just like get in shape, whether you know maybe use end in a relationship, I don't know. Whatever your reason is, you eventually over time want to actually look better. That's kind of like the gist of it. Is you actually get addicted to oh, but like I'm challenging my best, and that kind of you know obviously becomes like the testimony to yourself of like, but I could do more, and it's always that you're chasing that thing of more. And if you're not, I have no idea what you're doing in the gym because what a waste. But my point more so is is uh. You hit different phases of yourself in the gym. And I think that Lucas and I kind of experienced like our biggest ego in the gym. I think like we've, we have overcome that. And what I mean by that is if we did not work out for four hours, our day and probably the next day was just like absolutely demolished and destroyed. Now we do workout videos and YouTube videos at two or three o'clock in the morning. 
And it's kind of the same as when we were in college, because we did this in college, but my point more so is, is uh, it's more so an appreciation now to work out. It's not so much chasing PRs, it's not so much you know, being uh, the heaviest lifter in the gym or anything like that. It's actually strictly for, I actually want to look good, I want to feel good, I want my health to be in a, in a great spot. I actually do have a uh, hole in my heart. I have a uh, ventricular septal defect. So a part of me always being very fit or active has been honestly always a part of my life. But you know, at the end of the day, we all are in different phases of our journey in the gym. And we're at the point now where we want to be able to help as much as possible. We want to be able to educate as much as possible. And we still want to maintain what has gotten us you know, somewhere while we're trying to get somewhere else. And you know, that being said is you know, I'm actually more so focused on me doing a great workout in my apartment gym rather than sometimes stressing myself more out more, getting in the car, going you know, to the gym super late. Even though we're very close to the gym, it's not even about that. It's just sometimes time is of the essence and we have to make sure that we're actually like, utilizing our time best as possible. And I'm sure that could actually relate to you as well as like just if you're busy in your own life, sometimes the gym becomes a hassle, but we don't have to make it that way. We have to just prioritize what we need to do and get the hell out. <laughs> Now, I'm going to say one more thing. Oh, no. what are we saying? Don't mistake this for the oh. fact that if you want to work out with us, oh. we will dust your ass in the gym. Oh boy, I said that. Okay. All right, so this is my last, I would say, movement of the day and last ab exercise of the day. So this is the cable ab crunch, and this movement is actually very simple, but I comprehend why sometimes it's actually difficult for people to feel it. And sorry, my face is like really itchy right now. Sorry. Okay, anyways, so I typically like to have the cable above my head, but if, if this was like a taller cable, I don't think it would be at the very top just because I'm actually going down, like, you know, and I'm going to be like on my knees while I do this. So as I pull down the cable, I want to make sure that I'm actually like square to the cable. So I would say choosing a cable where you can actually like kind of move around and kind of like, I'd say form your body to the angle of the cable is important just so that you're actually not favoring one side. So I'm here and the point too is like I'm going to hold this like above my head but it's technically behind my head if you see that. So like when I go to cur or I'll say like curl myself down, I'm kind of taking my body and I'm not like, I'm not doing this. You know, I'm actually going to be staying with my hips hooked underneath me the whole time and you can see like I'm actually sitting higher on my knees. So I'm, I'm here and I'm taking this and I'm going to come all the way down. And the goal is like you want to try to put your head almost through like honestly almost through like your, your your knees there you know so depending on your range of motion and how far you can actually get down that doesn't matter it's more so like put it at a weight where you can actually confidently feel your abs working because again just kind of like the physio ball when this is done properly you should be very sore you should actually really feel your core engage you should actually feel like okay this is my upper ab this is my middle of my you know middle of my abs and like and then as you're going down you're squeezing you should start to feel this in your lower abdomen as well so this isn't just like a, oh i'm gonna work out the abs underneath my boobs that's not that's not it at all you should actually feel the entire range of motion and now i'm gonna do a couple reps and look at some, kind of go over some things that i missed maybe i mean honestly she didn't really miss any tips the best way to state this is you're doing like a reverse crunch but the weight's above your head on a cable and you're just focused on bringing your head through your knees, your elbows to your knees, and actually like crunching your core. It's like you're doing a physio ball crunch, but instead of being on a physio ball, you're on a cable and you're just working a different type of range of motion, working your core. Every time you post a picture that says like you're here late, I have to do it too. Oh, okay. That's what I'm digging up. I got you, understandable. I'm gonna sneeze, hold on. I hope it's violent. Hey, shoot! God, so I'm violent. sorry, I'm sorry. I have to sneeze to my mom. Alright, well guys, that concludes our workout <laughs> today. Bless me, did say bless you. Bless you. Alright, I bless you guys. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're watching us. We did the workout. I did a good workout. I actually really like, if I could bring this gym with me, like, if I had this as my basement, like, I'd be living. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a good size, honestly. Good, good equipment. I never thought I'd appreciate a smaller gym, but this is the point we're at. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go to bed now. Thanks for watching. Bye.